actually the first person I thought of when I woke up this morning was Dan Levy because I'm so devastated for him and actually devastated for Ireland as well because I think um, there was a lot of talk at uh, around November that actually he mightn't even be starting in the Six Nations and the World Cup if everybody else got fit. Mm. I think the Six Nations put pay to that. I think he absolutely yeah. would have been starting in, in the World Cup and it looks like that's probably beyond him now if, if the leg break reports are, are true. Um, but the second person in my mind was Jacob Stockdale. How do you wake up this morning and not only do you know you have yeah. messed up that no try but also people like Neil Francis are talking about your four missed tackles. Shane Horgan is saying it wasn't just the try, it was... Yeah, so Shane Horgan says, um, I don't want to kick a man when he's down. <laughs> but I'm going to. And you can bet the Ulster wing probably never felt as low in his career as he did last night, but Stockdale made defensive errors which were just as costly as his failure to touch the ball down properly. Yeah, like, I think it was really telling, and I think I tweeted last night, Jacob Stockdale should get on the phone to Keith Earls immediately. Mm. Well, Jacob obviously is six foot three, six foot four. He barely bends down. He he tries to use his arm. He's ben, he's, ben, he's bending from his waist. Um, it, there's no attempt to get off his feet at all. Mm. Keith Earls, when he's going over for his 71st minute try, is practically vertical. He's diving so high. He's coming across. He knows that there's a chance someone can reach him, but if he gets his legs up high enough, mm. they're they're going to miss the tackle, which happens, and he gets the ball down no problem. And Jacob Stockdale is, what, a couple of metres over the white line and he's not even bending. He's dead right straight. Shane Horgan makes the point in, in the Sunday Times that there's a smile about to creep into his face, mm. much like what happened to <laughs> the Italian... Uh, now, I, I said to him last night, because we were in doing the highlights for Virgin, and I said, are you sure it's not a grimace? And he's adamant it's a smile. But I remember Kieran McGeehan finishing fourth or third. Where did Kieran McGeehan finish? She got a medal. She third, got a medal excuse third, me, yeah. yeah. She was just pipped for... Uh, silver and on the TV they thought maybe she had a bit of a wry smile but then it was either Jerry Kiernan who'd know her pretty well yeah, said no no grimacing. that's a grimace that's she was grimace. not happy with her third but yeah, somebody yeah. thought that was a smile so I don't know maybe Stockdale is grimacing trying to get over the line yeah perhaps maybe, maybe. he knew he was in trouble at that stage because he hadn't bent early enough um, Murray Kinsler spotted that he had spoken to his under 20s coach um, last year and said that the under, his under twenties coach said he used to give him heart attacks because he used to be three or four meters past the whitewash and wouldn't bend and sometimes would look like he was about to not get the try. Right. So this has been an issue for him. It's okay. not a once off. Um, so well, that has to be sorted out. That really worried me then. If it was a once off and he actually because he's a tall guy, he was upright. He obviously you're a lot faster when you're you know back straight. Mm. So and he had got past what seven seven Leinster players. So. I was kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt and then I saw that and I thought, oh man, Jacob, if this has been an issue that someone has flagged with you before, yeah. you get off your feet, you dive and you have two hands on the ball. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think he will ever make this mistake again. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't watch a lot of rugby, but for some reason, uh, on three occasions, right, I've seen this happen, this uh, people about to score a try and yeah. about to celebrate and... Uh, like the other week, the Italian guy. Marco Zanoni. Yeah. Mm. If ever there's like a once in a lifetime <laughs> thing. You now, know? He was definitely that was, smiling. He was smiling. Yeah. That was, he was and practically belly laughing. Yeah. And it, it seems like such a, such a basic yeah. thing. Like, uh, uh, there was Freddie Burns for Bath as well. Yeah, that was a, mm. a, a celebrated one. I, and I happen to see, I don't know how I saw <laughs> this. Right? Is there a Declan Lynch, Lynch curse here? Is that what this is? What? Is there a Declan Lynch curse? Yeah. It must be, it must be. But uh, I'm looking at this article in the... Um, in, uh, in the Observer by Paul Rees about the psychology about how uh, Eddie Jones, the England manager, mm -hmm. is uh, trying to employ the services of um, a, a health company uh, called Headspace, yeah. which is to do with psychological kind of assistance to sports people, right? But too, because he was kind of taken aback by how England collapsed against Scotland and he feels that they, for some reason, they don't have a kind of a, their heads aren't right, you know? And uh, the piece goes on to sort of, uh, there's a kind of a punchline halfway through it when it points out among the other people they've been working with are Arsenal. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? At that point, you know, la canned laughter <laughs> comes up, you know. Uh, but, uh, and mindfulness, of course, is always there, thereabouts. You never, you'll never get through this without reading and seeing the word mindfulness a few times. But, uh, like, Sinead was pointing out as well that, like, we thought all this had been achieved already by, you know, even Gaelic football teams have psychological kind of advice or, you know, training or, or a lot assistance. of GA teams have, like, no? they have the benefit of them constant, mm. constantly. Like, they're signed up for the year. Yeah. Like, but you, you would think, one, in terms of rugby, 
putting the ball down when you cross the line, that would be less than one, you know, in the, uh, I know the, like Headspace do offer a wide range of services, but maybe they could begin, they sort of, nothing is too simple, it appears. Listen, uh, it appears so. Yeah, I think it is interesting if England don't have a sports psychologist on their books. How would I'd be that, shocked if they don't. I would be very shocked. Like, they absolutely must, they do. They, they, that can't be something no. that has just no. passed by the no. English rugby setup. There's no way Eddie Jones has only thought, psychology seems important. <laughs> I might look into this. Maybe they're just moving on from somebody else to, to headspace. this place, yeah. yeah. What's Neil Francis saying about the game? Uh, Neil Francis has some uh, nice one-liners about, about both games. Uh, so with Leinster he said they look like one of those kinder eggs with no toys inside um, last night so he kind of makes the point of um, you know the, the, the two best teams yesterday the teams who played the best rugby were Edinburgh and uh, Ulster okay, yeah. but ended up you know losing out to kind of the greater experience of um, what he calls typical Munster so he calls uh, Munster typical Munster throughout his column which I'd say will um, annoy a few people further south of, of us right now um, he obviously takes massive issue with Stockdale. Uh, Stockdale tells him, you know, two hands good, one hand bad <laughs> um, about the no try, but also takes issue again, very similar to Shane Horgan, um, about the about the four missed tackles. Um, his point mostly is that Leinster stand-ins are just not of semi-final standard. He, you know, even the likes of Edward Bur Adam Byrne, he puts in there who who got mm. the who got the try, um, and with. The monster then obviously just picks out Keith Earls, who he said whose presence of mind was on another level from anyone else on the pitch. Mm. This was about his first try, tapped the ball from the mark and was over the line before any of the Edinburgh players could complain. Earls has been electric all season and is sharp to all possibilities that he has become typical Munster's most important player. Yeah, he's a brilliant story, Keith Earls. Like ten years ago now, went on that Lions tour as a young player and had his confidence just smashed to mm. smithereens, didn't go well, and then has talked about just struggling to get preparation right, getting really big at certain points when it was in vote to get big and then getting too skinny and it seems like in the last five, six years, four or five years even, he's just almost found himself yeah, he's as a figured, professional. he's figured it out. And and it's like he's getting faster. It is, he's a wonder to watch mm. and I actually found yesterday because I watch a lot of rugby but I don't particularly have, like I'm from Leinster so I probably should have, you know, the Groff for Leinster but I, you know, I, are, it, Sorry, are you coming out of the closet as a Leinster fan? No, I'm, I'm like, I'm actually Ireland first is what I call it I and I, I seem to just gravitate towards players and who I like watching and I was so confused yesterday, I was like, I don't know what I'm meant to be like thinking and feeling here um, because I do actually genuinely just watch the Irish players and how they're doing and what, and you do end up, I was sitting there yesterday going who am I meant to be up for in, in this match but, um I think Keith Earls and Joey Carberry are the two people I just absolutely have adored watching mm. in the last um, season, really, yeah, yeah, the last year. By the way, Shane Horgan on Conor Murray says, uh, Conor Murray's always been a man to trust, yet there's no doubt he hasn't the same since his injury, and he says of the current situation, the tempo's not there, this has also infected his decision-making, which up until now has been exemplary. And he says, neither Munster nor Leinster's performances will worry Saracens, Racing or Toulouse. They will have two noted giants of the European stage drawing all their experience to ed out, edge out two uh, testy opponents. And they'll know that both Irish sides are capable of better. They'll have to be because Saris are flying. Yeah, and, I, and Neil Francis agrees. I think both of them are very much on the same page that the semi-final might be as good as it gets for, for the two Ireland yeah. provinces. Especially if um, Leinster have to go to France. Yeah. If Toulouse win today, they'll be at home. Yeah. Leinster, that is. So. I think with the Conor Murray thing, I the decision-making, I agree with Shane, that, and particularly in the France game when everyone felt that it, it was getting back on track in Ireland, we're getting to their best. And mm. I really didn't feel that in the Aviva that day at all. I was leaving thinking, you know, that they had to win that ma match, obviously, because France were so poor. But yeah. it didn't feel like that. And, and Conor Murray's decision-making still felt off. That that quick decision-making that he is, that m allows him to be as confident as he is, and that confidence allows him then to do the things that he does. Mm. But there was that moment for the second try yesterday where the offload was something a little different it yeah. was a little bit of magic so at least there was that at least there's something coming back and you know after an injury like that a neck injury it might take some time totally i saw luke Fitzgerald tweeting that he thought he was really good yesterday so there's various opinions out there